Hello everyone. This video is on how to use the cash flow forecast report in Business One. So you may have seen the uh, precursor quick video to showing you where to find the cash flow reports and functionality in Business One. Uh, again, that will depend a little bit upon which version of Business One that you're using, whether it's the SQL version or the HANA version. Both versions have cash flow forecast and cash flow statement, but the HANA version, of course, also has the advanced cash flow dashboard, which we will do in a follow up video. So I, I'm clicking into the financials module, I'm opening up the financial reports area, and then I'm clicking on uh, the financial reports. So we've got statement of cash flows, and that was in that short video. There's where you go if you want to get a uh, actual statement of cash flows uh, and then this one that says cash flow and then this cash flow forecast is the advanced dashboard we'll cover that in that second video so when I open this screen up I get the I guess uh, the parameter selector box for how to run my cash flow forecast so it's not just one static report I get to choose what's in scope of uh, you know what data I essentially want to see in my cash flow forecast. So you've you know you can change the the accounts that are being considered in the forecast. Uh, you can change the transactions that are being considered in the forecast. It's really sort of up to you, right? So you can kind of make your cash flow forecast more meaningful and more pertinent to your specific situation. So we've got a cash flow forecast from uh, we're gonna run it from the first of April uh, right up until the end of August and we're gonna choose to see the cash flow forecast weekly although you could see a cash flow forecast based on you know a daily period basis weekly monthly quarterly semi-annually annually and that just means that it's gonna group the prospective transactions and the rolling cash flow balances on that period basis. Okay, so we're going to pick weekly. Um, now below the time interval, there's a number of selectors that allow you to choose what's in and what's out. So recurring postings at the top, these are the recurring journal entries. So if you're using the recurring postings functionality, so over here on the left hand side, you can see I'm pointing to it in the financials module. If you're using automated recurring postings, then these recurring posting uh, templates will be considered or these upcoming recurring postings. So these are used typically by the finance and accounting team to, uh, I guess, prepare for a prospective posting to the ledger. So let's say you had a, a recurring postings uh, uh, set up here so that on the first of every month you're uh, making a journal entry for uh, some sort of transaction with you know known account determination and known balances uh, okay and and of course these recurring postings don't have to be completely automated uh, typically there's a review process to make them happen but that's those can be considered in the cash flow forecast you can also consider journal vouchers in your cash flow forecast so if you're using journal vouchers to sort of be a staging for journal entries and you'll know what I'm talking about if you actually use those um, then those can be considered in the cash flow uh, forecast um, considering delays in payments again this may be a good thing for a follow-up video um, I'm not exactly sure how that works but if somebody's curious then we could investigate that a little bit further and we could uh, we could sort of explain how that works um, display fully reconciled postings again this is not something that I use uh, commonly so if somebody's interested in uh, drilling down please put a question in the comments below if you're curious to know more about that adding in blanket agreements so if you use blanket agreements which are those sales and purchasing sort of contract agreements that you have with customers you can add those into the mix so that would consider um, like if you're doing item based or monetary based blanket agreements for incoming amounts outgoing amounts those blanket agreement amounts would be then considered in your cash flow forecast okay so those blanket agreements aren't strictly speaking marketing documents they're a form of master data that sort of reflects you know upcoming potential business or potential procurement um, and they can be included in the cash flow forecast 
You can also choose to include marketing documents. So uh, again, um, if you're not familiar with that term, marketing documents refers to all of the AR transactional and AP transactional documents. So everything from uh, quote to order to delivery to invoice and the various styles of invoices. Now, if you, you notice here, there's, a, there's an ellipsis button here. There's the dot, dot, dot. If you press the dot, 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 you can choose which marketing document types are considered in scope. And uh, as it stands, you can see that sales quotes actually, the sales quotes are a form of marketing documents, so are purchase quotations, but they're not considered in the cash flow statement because um, they don't have a commitment impact on the on the ledger. There's no GL impact, um, so that you can't include you can't include quotes and orders um, in uh, this version of the cash flow forecast. I think you might maybe in the new advanced dashboard hand I'm not sure what we'll we'll cover that in the upcoming video uh, okay you can also include document drafts in the cash flow forecast so if you're creating sales orders and you're essentially saving them uh, in the document drafts you can choose to include those things as well um, and you can include re recurring transactions. So recurring postings are actually queued and created sort of templated recurring journal postings, but you can also use the recurring transactions module either on the AP or AER side. And these are actual recurring posting templates for things like sales orders, deliveries, invoices. Um, and so on whatever period basis this recurring posting screen uh, pops up, and you would specify a template for a recurring posting, say an AR invoice, like a monthly membership for something or a monthly billing uh, that always has the same amount. And then you can kind of go ahead and execute them. Those upcoming recurring marketing document transactions can be, again, included in the scope of a cash flow forecast. So if any of these um, areas like these these options um, like you'd like to know more about the functionality behind that as well you know please do write a comment in the comment section and we'll we'll attempt to to add that video all right over on the right hand side you can see that now uh, the accounts the cash accounts um, and and credit card and checks uh, you can you can choose which cash accounts are in scope and which are not in scope just by selecting the X so if I wanted to take all my cash accounts, sorry, out of scope, it's not a double click, it's a single click. So just single click and uh, disappear all of the X's, single click, put all the X's back. But then you can also choose to exclude things like let's say you wanted to exclude your savings account in the cash flow forecast. Uh, you could do that or, or you know, maybe you've got other asset, you know, cash accounts investment accounts you wanted to exclude from the cash flow forecast you could do so okay and then the credit card accounts and the checking account um, the business partner tab will allow you to filter the cash flow forecast based on transactions accounts and what have you that relate to a certain business partner so customer or vendor a range or a group of business partners or even a business partner property so let's say for instance you wanted to do a cash flow forecast and you just wanted to include a property that indicated you know high volume customers or VIP customers or you wanted to you know let's say you did tag your customers who are credit risks and you use this business partner property screen to do so you could exclude um, those customers that are credit risks from your cash flow forecast uh, that sort of thing kind of gives you a, gives you a way to facilitate that type of uh, analysis and reporting um, so opening balance, calculate opening balance. Again, if you want to know more about these capabilities, uh, probably in a follow-up video, you can also filter by range of project or range of blanket agreement. Lastly, at the bottom of the screen, you can see that there are uh, there's this free form area for you to be able to kind of freehand, uh, you know, like let's say as the financial person or the business manager, you just know that there's something that isn't, you know, it's coming up, it's down the road, but it isn't covered in any of these other you know recurring postings or blanket agreements or what have you so to throw that into consideration of the current scope uh, like let's say on line number one here we've said that we know that on the 28th of April we're gonna need to make a large purchase of 
um, some uh, printers, uh, for instance, and um, you know that's going to have an outgoing amount of twenty-five thousand dollars, and you know it's going to be considered in um, uh, which account, right? Credit card checks. Uh, is it one time? Is it recurring? You can do that all down here. So this is a great ad hoc way that you can kind of throw in these things that you know in your head. Oh yeah, okay, we're needing to spend this much uh, to maintain a vendor relationship or we know that uh, a customer typically makes a large purchase but it, it, you know this time a month but it's not reflected in any of the other documents that are on the system you can throw that in here and this will be included in the cash flow forecast so once you've gone through and you've you've chosen all of these settings accurately it's possible that you don't really have to tweak these settings much at all but it is good that you you take a look at all of these settings um, and you understand what they all do because sometimes when the report doesn't run the way that you anticipate it and this is really common Common with financial reports with ledger reports and business one sometimes the reason the report isn't running the way that you expected is because there's something in scope or not in scope that should or shouldn't be and it's it's as simple as clicking on and off a flag all right so I'm gonna I'm gonna click this report now we're gonna run this cash flow report um, I did a test video on this and uh, you know one of the things that I did is I, I ran this report and and because I was running the report for multiple months uh, you know there's a number of weeks here but one of the the mistakes I made in the in the test video was I toggled this the currency of this report to US dollar or euro without having a currency set uh, like an exchange rate set sorry for all of these periods so uh, just a just a heads up if you open this report uh, it defaults to local currency. If you flip it into US dollar, you can do that. But I didn't originally have my exchange rate set four months in advance. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to use that toggle, my suggestion to you is to uh, go into the pardon me, into the administration module, exchange rates and indexes, and make sure that for every month you know or period that you're running the the cash flow forecast over that you have an anticipated exchange rate in the system I realize that those are upcoming and you don't know the actual exchange rates but you can't use that flag uh, like you can't use that selector to change the currency unless you have an exchange rate set here so you're gonna have to guess if you want to use that capability and and if you don't have these set in the system and you flip this to US dollar or euro or what have you then it's gonna pop up and prompt you and it's gonna prompt you for every month and you need to fill in the rates for every month so uh, again, this exchange rates and indexes window at the bottom here, set rate for selection criteria. This is a good quick way to set it for the entire month, um, but I don't know if you can use this capability uh, across months or, or not. I think you might only be able to use it for the current month. Okay, so um, there you go. So we've got our cash flow forecast and uh, we can, at the, at the top you see the range was already set in the selection criteria. I'll just put it back into local currency. I haven't used this business partner account thing very often, so I'll just put it back into local currency. And I'll drill into um, each period, and you can see there's a sort of an opening balance carried forward. And then for every period, you can see that there are anticipated transactions. So security level kind of refers to the, the uh, account categorizations, like the uh, you know the cash accounts, the credit accounts, the check accounts. Um, you know as far as sort of level of certainty in your your cash flow analysis. Um, and if there are anticipated transactions on those accounts, then you're going to see them in the cash flow forecast. So you can see that for this upcoming period, we've got, uh, or we may have actually already had, uh, incoming payments uh, for this period because this is actually a um, a period that has already passed, of course. And as we roll through the the periods here, so let's select one that's upcoming. So today's the 17th. So let's select the one for next week, and we can see that in the cash accounts, there's you know something forecast is upcoming uh, in that particular period. Now at the bottom of the screen, you can hit expand, and you can hit collapse really quickly 
and it'll expand all or collapse all. And that's actually got a, the, a really good good feature to, to know, like if you're wanting to dump this cash flow forecast screen into Excel and I have everything collapsed, so I'm just going to show this to you really quick. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the uh, Excel button in the ribbon bar and I'm going to choose uh, Excel 2007 output because for some reason it defaults to plain text output. I don't want that. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to dump it into an Excel file. The Excel file will be precisely what you see on the screen. It'll be rolled up, okay? So it's not dumping, you know, what's underneath and there's no drill down in the Excel file, by the way. It is literally dumping exactly what's on the screen. So if you want the collapse version, make sure that you start collapsed. If you want the expanded version of this, you can go ahead and you can click expand all or you can manually toggle what level you want it expanded at. Um, if I expand all and then I hit the Excel output, and we're just going to say, oh, I may not be able to replace a file that's currently open. So let's just close that. And then it's going to relaunch it. And you can see the Excel dump dumps as the fully expanded report. Uh, okay, so then you can work within an Excel. And it's just a straight dump of what's on the screen. Okay, so that's the cash flow forecast report. It is present in both the SQL and the HANA versions of SAP Business One. It's been there uh, for a while. Hopefully you found this video useful and if you have any follow-up questions all, at all, please put them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for your attention.